Howdy folks, TJ here. Package just arrived today. I want to do an unboxing. This video will be strictly an unboxing because I need to build up my courage to actually use this thing. And I don't know if I'll have enough courage to try it this weekend because I've got uh, some honeydews and stuff to do. My eyes got stabbing in it. When you when you got allergies, once in a great while, you feel like you got sand throwing into your eyeballs right when you're trying to do a video. So what's in here is a first that I've ever purchased for myself. And it's the second in my life in terms of a tool that's in here. Uh, the last one I purchased or acquired, I don't remember, it might have even came with a job that I was doing, was in the 1990s. So let me show you what I have and then you can start guesstimating what's in here. If you are on some of my retro Facebook groups, you may know what that is, but here's what TJ has had in this kind of beat up, uh, fabric-y, foamy overlay is a tool set. A tool set for nerds, if you want to call it that. I'm fine being called a nerd. And, and, and some of the little elastic-y things that are here. You know, when elastic gets old, it starts drooping like body parts. When you get old, stuff starts drooping. Uh, and that's what these do. So the tools don't stay in too well. But this, needless to say, has stayed in my home office. And it does get used. It gets used mostly for the screwdrivers. Periodically, the needle nose pliers. Uh, little... I call them dykes. I don't know if that's the proper word. Wire cutters. So this particular set has little mini, not mini, but small uh, needle nose pliers, uh, dykes, <laughs> uh, or uh, wire cutters, a screwdriver that has various heads or screw types that you can plug in here or bits or bobs. What, what do you call these things? Uh... I mean, it's, it's a flathead screw on this one, but needless to say, there's two packages here, one with various different size heads and nut drivers. So some of these over the last, since 1990s, uh, I think I got most of them still in here. Mostly the time we'll grab something in here and use it and then try to put it back. Not much instructions. Uh, for some reason, I put a razor blade in here. I must have been trying to take off some decal or slicing something. Although I did recently use this set. So we've got fiber internet here at my house now. And if you've been following my channel, you know I've been in the stone ages when it comes to the internet. Because I've been here for about 21 years. And we were on satellite internet. That is a step below Fred Flintstone. So you've got Fred Flintstone, satellite internet, and then above that, dial up and everything else. Okay? That's how bad satellite it is. But my dog, so the way they install the fiber wiring for, I got it also for TV. I got internet and TV. She chewed through the ethernet cabling that they ran on the outside of the house. So I had to go in and surgically mend eight wires together. And they're little mini wires. So I think I used this razor blade to do a little fine tuning and it works. So I did it. I mean, not saying that's a great tool, but razor blades work. Uh, some solder. This is very, uh, no, 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 no. This is not solder. This is, and it's overseas. I know you saw, call it solder. In the United States, we call it solder. And like Z and Z, you know, there's those proponents that if you say it wrong, they, they castrate you. Hopefully you don't do that to me because I'm a friendly chap. <laughs> uh, but this is a spare part container. So it's got a little lid and I've never, ever used it for spare parts. The spare parts I've just thrown in here and made a heap of goo and chunk, a solder, soldering iron, uh, a typical plug-in with zero temperature capability other than hot, uh, scalding, and it did the job for what I was trying to do. Limited. The last time I used this, probably five years ago, either soldering a Volkswagen part on my 1967 bus that I needed to uh, solder a couple of wires together, uh, or I have a had a play tape. Think eight track tape, and for you uh, Sinclairians, uh, think micro cartridge. Uh, 
uh, the size of that, and it has two tracks on it, and it, it was pre-cassette, pre-8-track, back in the 60s. They were called play tapes, and I had a portable player, and the battery uh, connections came uh, undone, the wiring, uh, I think from acid from a battery, and I had to solder it together, and that's the last time, either that or a part in the Volkswagen. But this still works, but like I said, no temperature control. It's one speed, uh, one hotness. <laughs> then you had your typical little screwdriver. Uh, this is a Phillips head, and I'm missing the flathead one. It's someplace in the house. I've used the flathead one for tuning my carb on my Volkswagen bus, and I've used it for something in the house. Uh, this little thing... I'm not quite sure what that's called, but you could probably reach in and grab a part and pull it out. It's got little little wires things on there. I don't know the technical name for that. Here is the solder, and you can see there's a hell of a lot. It's pretty much full, so I've barely used it. Uh, and then a pair of tweezers and a chip puller, which I've used actually a few times, uh, I think, to pull a, uh, a ROM on an Atari computer. And then another type of puller. I don't know if technically these are both chip pullers or different component pullers. And I have no clue what this one is. No idea. I think it separates. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're going to, as I'm yapping, put these tools back in to the elastic that has come far undone. It's kind of like a garter belt. So for you guys my age, old, uh, back in the olden days when you dated a girl, you courted a girl... Uh, she would give you a garter belt. You either earned that garter belt uh, or they gave it to you. Just they felt sorry for you. <laughs> uh, I only received some from my wife. So I've been together with her for 35 years, but I was dating her in the 80s. Been together with her for 35 and married 32. Uh, so yeah, I do have a shoebox someplace with garter belt. And they are rather stretched out. They're the size of an elephant, and my wife's slender. So they stretch as you get older. You know, like like I said, body parts start stretching. That's what happened. So let's. I'm putting this stuff back in so I can uh, open this. I just feel in a chipper mood today. I don't know why, and 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 I feel a little silly. So I like um, bantering as I do stuff. Some folks I think enjoy that aspect of my channel. Others may prefer it be two point. Uh, I'm never two point, so I don't think too many of my viewers think that, but you never know. So, <laughs> uh, a lot of these things are stretched. I'm just trying to find a hole, someplace to stick and find a hole. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I've got all the tools in here. So this is what TJ has last used. So why did I want something new? So a buddy of mine, Mac, I won't say his last name, overseas, I won't say what country, but needless to say, I, I purchased something from him, he sent it to me, and either my fat hands, as you inserted this thing into a computer, I pushed a diode and it broke a leg. Or it was packed, uh, it was packed pretty tight, uh, and maybe it wiggled a little bit in shipping. I blame myself because of fat hands and inserting the cartridge 50,000 times uh, might have done it. So I'll blame me, not him, because he's an expert electrician. I am not. <laughs> but I need to repair this diode. It broke a leg. So rather than use that, it gave me an opportunity to purchase something I got from Amazon. So let's pull out the package. The Postal Service just drove up and delivered this. Now... Off the shoot, the box is a little beat up. Did I even hit record on this thing? I better check. And I was at 91% gigabytes on my recording, or data left. So I purchased my first solder station. So this is not a solder station. This is a little, little kit, a mobile kit that gives you just enough to kind of fit me through. Now this is not a named brand. Uh, I was very tempted to get a Weller, that would have been expensive, or I think it's called Hakko, H-A-K-K-O, I think it was, also expensive. I almost did it, but then I started thinking, let's test the waters here. Uh, on Amazon, it's nice that you can see the number of stars some things get, and this actually received a good review, even though it's named Lenovo, Lenovo, uh, a very offshoot name. 
uh, and it's the BK969S soldering station. I will say that the box this has come in is not very Apple-esque. So if you're an Apple user, the boxes are pretty. The box is probably your fifty hundred dollars you know. This is a not a flimsy box, but it's been on a shelf for a while. It's a little beat up. Uh, business name, Amazon, uh, AMZ LAB GmbH. That's a German uh, thing. Uh, Essen, business address, Blobenhof 23, Essen. Uh, and Wales in Cardiff. Uh, so there's all sorts of, but it's made in China. Uh, so 100 to 240 volt. So basically this box just has what you're getting, a little information of where it kind of came from to probably legalize everything. There's a lot of options. You Google, not Google, but go to Amazon and type in soldering station. There's a lot of options came up. What interested me is I like the looks of this one. Looks are always important for me for whatever reason. It looks like a weller in a way. It got good reviews and it's normally 50 bucks. So it wasn't one of those $17, $20 specials. It was a $50 one, but they had 50% off. And tons of great reviews, thousands and thousands of good reviews, like four stars. Uh, so I thought, you know what, 25 bucks. And since I'm a Prime member, it had like $2 off. So it ended up being like $22.50 plus tax. So it came to $24, just under, under $25 for this. So I go, you know what, even if it's a piece of crap, it's probably better than that. Uh, and it gives me some extra uh, stuff. So let's open this up. And like I said, so the box is, you know, it, it's seen its days. It's like, uh, it's been beat up a little bit, to tell you the truth. So not Apple-esque in terms of box, but right off the chute, there is some foam. There is a user guide in here. Like I said, it's Lenovo, Lenovo and it's got a, a little user booklet that came with it. Can't complain. It's nice that they gave you a little booklet, at least, because this day and age, they don't give you much paper. It's all digital. And it's got a table of contents, and it's got some finer points. And let's see. Does it have any instructions? Yes. It does have a little bit of a... Uh, my allergy is about to kick in, so I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> so it's got some pictures. So needless to say, I will read this to understand the buttons and stuff a little bit. Uh, so a little booklet. On the top is a piece of foam. Uh, the hard foam, uh, I don't know, three quarter, a half an inch thick, uh, three eighths inch thick, something like that. And then inside, fairly well protected. And then, of, so the reason this box is probably beat up is because it was shipped in a plastic Amazon, no box. So I can understand why it probably is a little beat up. So as long as the stuff inside is safe, I'm fine. So let's go ahead and so let's pull out. So everything looks like it's going to want to come out at the same time. So let's shimmy out this whole carcass. And now you've got the inside bowels of this box. All right. So, you know, it, it's got some foam around there. It's not super thick. The bottom... Oh, that's my, my clock. Oh, it's only the half an hour. So you don't have to go through all the chimes. So it's got enough protection. The bottom is a little thicker. The top's thicker. The side's about the same. But it, it protected it enough, it seems like, for shipping. So let's pull this out. So I'll pull this out, and then we'll show you some close-ups of everything. There you go. So let's go ahead and look at the iron first. So your typical... So this one's not going to plug into a wall. It's got a little round connector that I'll be plugging in and turning this and tightening it up. It's made out of plastic. 25 bucks. Eh, you know, probably the ones that are 100 and some odd bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, eh, they've got a connector that's a lot better. This one, needless to say, once I probably connect it, I'll leave it as a station and not have to worry about it. But the connection is just so-so. Uh, the cabling seems fine. This feels rather comfortable. It's got a real small little tip on there, uh, and the tips are replaceable. Uh, so it's got a little rubber rubber here. It feels comfortable. So I can see trying to get precise uh, solder <laughs> connections here. Mm, my eyes are terrible, though. So the odds are if I'm aiming here, 
I'll be looking here. <laughs> uh, so here's the the wand. I don't know what's the proper the sol soldering iron. It's got a nice little contraption here, a home for my iron. And what's cool? Let me show you a little closer up. So it's plastic, but it's it it fairly heavy duty, and it's got a fun color. I like colors. It's kind of got a blue, tealy look. And what they didn't see in the picture is there's actually here a thin sponge. So you can clean your solder head. And it's got the uh, cleaner here in the front. What do you call this? Like a Brillo pad kind of thing. A metal pad that you can clean it. And it's got the hole for you to insert your solder iron into. So it looks nice. And I'm happy that it's got a little placer, so when you stick it in here, it's just going to have a perfect little home for you to put it. Because right now, when I was using that one, it'd be all hot. And what do I do? Uh, what do I put it? I'm, I'm doing it on my nice dining room table. I'm going to burn something. So, cool. It comes with that. So, it also comes with one, two, three, four, five. It's, there's a head on here, and then five various heads here that you can unscrew that one and insert these on here. So that's cool, it's got all sorts of different sizes. I'll read and I'll explore and I'll watch videos on YouTube. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've soldered and it, and it was just a half job, so. So let's take this package off, so. Plastic, it's got a little scratch on the top, but uh, no big deal, and I can kind of run my finger through it. But it's, it looks like a little cheap weller to me. <laughs> That's the way I see it. And it's pretty simple. You know, you've got your up, down, and a settings button here. You'll be screwing in your connector here, if it's in the camera. It'll be connecting in there. And it's just all plastic. And it says Lenovo on it, BK969S soldering station. Showed it a couple different angles. Hopefully one of these comes in well enough. Here's the side, so it's got an on-off button on the side. Here's the back, where your typical 110 volt power cord plugs into here in the United States. Side, it's got little venting on the side. And then on the bottom, uh, just your typical bottom. It's got a little design to it too, that's interesting. But it looks nice, it looks a little nicer than some of the other little $20 specials, even though technically this one only cost me $22.50 plus tax. But it looks a little nicer. And if I enjoy this and have a good experience, <clears throat> maybe I'll expand it down the road and get a, a Hako or Weller or whatever. For now, I just need to solder a diode back together again to make this device hopefully work. So, uh, and then I'm going to explore repairing because I've got a lot of retro computers. And I'm sure at some point I need to dive in and learn how to replace the capacitors. The last time I took a class on electronics was 1983. What year is it now? 2022. You do the math. It's a long time. And so I don't really know electronics. If you tell me to remove this and put this in here, I will figure it out. I will get a solder iron and I'll heat it up and I'll do whatever. And it may look hacky. It may look terrible. But if it works, that's, that's good. But when I start doing maybe a full capacitor replacement because they're old, I wanted something a little better than what I had, and hopefully with some practice, I can do that. And so what I'll do is in a future video, I will show me repairing this diode and then testing the device and see if it works. But that's not today. Today was simply to say, hey, I uh, purchased my first soldering station. That's it. Have a great weekend, everybody. And uh, have a great rest of your 2022 if you don't watch any other videos other than this one. Which I hope not. I like you to watch my videos. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fun chap, aren't I? <laughs> See you later.